Today's video continues Sapo Week, and this time we are going to be pairing yellow with blue. And the, the yellow core is basically the same, and as I said, it's going to be likely mostly the same throughout the week. And we're just going to be pairing it with different colors, again, to give me an excuse to play Sapo. Now, this time around, we're adding a lot of additional AoE removal, so things like Cataclysm, Thunderclap, uh, even some more spot removal like Ice Spike, some card draw with Brainstorm. Uh, the pair of Fossagrims is great because I'm not running Impel to pair with the Serpent's Dens. However, Fossagrim comes down and can really help out Serpent's Den if you've got multiples on the board. Uh, Magnus again, more AoE. You kind of get the point here. Just AoE, AoE, AoE. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, as always, I will put the deck list in the video description and you can import export that as you would like if you don't know how to do that there's a video on my channel showing you how to do that but we're gonna hop on the ladder and play two games win or lose as is the format of these videos and we always hope for more wins than losses but I can't make any promises and I am not ashamed I I have no issues with putting my losses on the internet. All of my losses, my play mistakes, what are you going to do, make fun of me? Too late. I'm already doing that myself. So uh, I've said it before in other videos, but it bears repeating. There's not a scarier start for me as, as a person than a, a turn one grinning Kolobok. There's just not, not a scarier start in the game. This card wreaks havoc, and I am not excited to see that come down. And the worst part is, is we, we just do not have a good answer for it here. At all. And by not have a good answer, I mean we have no answer. We're just going to do this. I mean, next turn, if we really want, we can Miso Libre it just to stun it and try to try to keep it to only gaining one mana when everything is said and done. In fact, that's very likely going to be our play. All right, Viper. Viper we can live with. Viper I'm okay with. So this goes here. And as I said, even though we'd love to get Serpent done up and running... I do not want this moving so that uh, we can hopefully trade into it. And again, at three energy, it's still only one mana, so you can cut your losses here. And then next turn, unless we draw something out of the ordinary, it's going to be the Serpent Den coming down. Probably burn the Foss Grim so that we can at least get to the two blue mark which lets us cast everything but cataclysm from the blue side and so uh, yeah we will go ahead and do that and I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plop the serpents down here to try to get in the way of this anyway slow them down uh, Serpent Den placement, uh, again, it's always subjective. Sometimes you have to put it in different places, but when you run three copies of Serpent's Den, I really like it in the three middle lanes. So what I mean by that is, is this lane, this middle lane, and here, because then that gives you the most coverage, because typically in a late game control deck like this, you're actually using your Serpent's Den as stall tools, and by putting them in those three positions, you're kind of ensuring that you get a blocker every turn. And that's important, so... In case you're ever wondering why I put them where I put them, that is why. Thinking about long-term coverage, keeping my health in a comfortable position. Alright. So, again, because of that Grinning Kolobok, they got to get all the way up to Harvester levels here. But we can answer back with, uh, if we burn this, we have this trade in here. 
move this over to make some room, but uh, Magnus here, I mean they get to draw the card, not much we can do about that, but Magnus helps us clear some stuff up. Typically you want like a really high impact Magnus play, but because we're running the deck we're running with two Misanthropias, two Cataclysms, two Thunderclaps, and Magnus, you can kind of get away with you know, using him for just a, a two-for-one like that, which wasn't even really a two-for-one because of the Miso, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that that's an acceptable play. And we're going to probably just answer back with a Harvester going in front of that. Uh, Zolia is another potential option, but Harvester I think makes the most sense right now. I'd love to move this over and keep chaining snakes, but with this having overrun, not something I'm willing to risk right now. Plus, I want to pop that artifact anyway, so we'll just get that done. And uh, we're going to burn a maze and answer with a harvester. And we're a turn away from Sapo if necessary. We have uh, kind of all of our big bombs early on. Harvesters are great. Sapo is great. Alright. They did that. That technically lets them just fry the trade, but I'm curious if they're going to bounce this here or not. Detain the port is always interesting because I've had people bounce Sapo, but then, like, I just have Sapo back. So, you get to blow something else up. It always feels good. Alright, so they just put the damage in, but we can turn around and trade right back anyway, so maybe we'll use Sapo to answer whatever else they play this turn. We might go with a, a Maze and Zolia play ourselves. Alright, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen here. We'll go ahead and do this, draw a card, and I think saving Cataclysm over Thunderclap makes sense, so this is what we'll burn so we get to our three blue. Let's get this damage here, let's move this, let's get the Maze down, along with our Zolia. And uh, even though we don't have an enemy here, we'll just give this Blight, because we want to get her energy up and running, and that's expendable. Jamming Satellite, another great pickup for us. So, again, we're kind of in a good position. So, we made them use a Misanthropia. That's one down. That is one down. couple of different things that we could do here. We could give this Blight with Zolia. I wonder if Suppression slows down Blight. I legitimately don't know how that interaction works. So I guess we're going to learn together. Here's what we're going to do, gang. We're going to go ahead and give this Blight. But then we're going to play this Jamming Satellite, and I'm actually gonna waste potentially this suppress just to see if we can keep her alive for a turn because at the start of the turn I don't know if I don't know the order of operations I don't know if this is gonna become unsuppressed and then take the uh, the minus minus on the blight Ugh. And that is what happens. Well, shame. So this is warded, and that's important because that means I cannot take that out with Sapo. At least not unless... We suppress it first. 
So interesting thing here, we can't deal damage to it, but we can still stun it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get uh, this here in the center, because I'll want Sapo to come down here next turn, once that goes back up to two energy. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do this again, not because of the damage, but because of the stun. So you can see the stun effect is on there. And the reason we want to do that is because we don't want to lose our jamming satellite. We want to be able to use that and then hit that with Sapo, but even more so, like, jamming satellite's amazing. So if you can protect it, you want to protect it. Systems optimal. See, like, this, this is something that we can deal with the good old-fashioned way. Do this to make Super Sapo. And I think we want to run into this anyway. Because this has uh, Blast 2, we actually can't stop it by leaving two bodies here. So putting the damage on that makes sense. They're going to draw some cards, and rightfully so. We're going to get to draw two cards ourselves next turn, but then again, so will they. They're in summer. And we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. So again, we, we've kind of got them in this weird pickle where you can use Deported to bounce Sapo if you want, but then I'm just going to turn around and use that to blow up your other minions, so. That comes in. We take the four. Downside is now that means Cataclysm does blow up our jamming satellite if we ever do have to use it. And a couple of different paths of play, if you will, but I think the one that makes the most sense is the one that lets us push for like 10 damage, right? So we go ahead and we use this here so that this pushes damage home. Lore Broker goes here. It's just going to end up trading with this. The blast will kill this, and then we still take four, but theoretically that should leave us with one health on our jamming satellite, which is, again, what we're trying to protect. But it may end up being a moot point. We are also in a position where if Sapo remains on the board, even if they try to go with blockers, we might be able to get a victory uh, just by playing Cataclysm and then swinging. So they have to basically, I mean, they don't know this, but they kind of have to bounce it. Or, I mean, just get rid of it in some fashion this turn. Because it will survive Cataclysm, not just because it's a 10-10, but because of the warded, it will not even take damage. And so whatever you put in front of it, well, now that is something that also, that is something that also survives Cataclysm. Okay. That might change things. That is one heck of a demon, huh? The laser grid means that I can't run into that with the pox bringer. Though, jamming satellite should help us at least in that regard. But still not enough for Cataclysm to get the job done. It's 
gonna be interesting here. Oh, that's what they're bouncing, huh? Yeah, I don't think there's any way around that, huh? Still gonna die to the laser grid, even with that being suppressed. Which does fill me with a, a little bit of sadness. So this here, normally it uh, gets defender and so forth to the thing directly across from it. So if we move Sapo, we actually have a shot here. But probably not. So we could do this. Play our own misanthropia. And go with a lore broker Looking here. So the reason that we do that is because this is going to go to a 7-7 seven, seven now. Ours will still technically be the 10-10. Ten, ten. Or, or not? Oh, because of the suppression. Well, I thought if you reapplied Blight post-suppression that it would uh, uh, work, but I guess it does not. I was thinking in terms of the way like silence works in Hearthstone or the Elder Scrolls Legends, but it does not appear to work that way, so they're likely just going to trade that for Sapo. Which makes me very unhappy. All right, that transport. Ura! It could be a bit of an issue as well. I think we're going to be forced to Cataclysm here. I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see. guess we'll wait and see the cataclysm makes the most sense well maybe not we could again use misanthropia and then cataclysm the following turn that would at least potentially keep our satellite alive could also just drop a harvester here hope they don't have removal I'm actually kind of partial to that the more that I'm can sit well so it's fragile one and armor two so I could attack into this and it only takes one This is such a tough call here. I think we go with this. 
I think that uh, the the misanthropia makes the most sense. And then, depending on what they play, we can maybe re-clear with Cataclysm. Ura! Ura! We also might get away with just playing Harvester. Nope. Zolia's a, a big enough priority that we'll probably just Cataclysm. It's going to mean losing our Ooh, jamming satellite, but I think that that is a fair trade-off overall. So the net end result is we're at more health, have more cards in hand. All right, so they have made a 10-10 again, which is fair. We just do this and heal. And the reason that we do it this way is because it gets some damage on that. And then, uh, if necessary, we can clear it with a double thunderclap. I think that's entirely fine. That is a big boy, though. All right, we can no longer clear that with a double thunderclap. Curious to see here if they decide to also bounce it or not. Oh, even worse. Wow. That's a huge play for them. Okay. It's a huge play for them. But they, again, have no cards in hand. So I think if we do something like this, and as weird as it sounds, at least one thunderclap here. It's like we can do this to cycle and draw a card. And now I take the one thunderclap, and then that sets us up for a cataclysm victory next turn if they don't gain health. Even without even without drawing Cataclysm, we were pretty close. We only needed one more damage because this Thunderclap would have cleaned this up and then we could get more damage in, but as of right now, they don't gain health or they don't do at least four damage to us. That Cataclysm will get it done. And they decided to get a, a big Unicorn and I don't blame them. We're just going to get it done uh, with a big storm. With a big old storm. So that was a good game, right? And that was only game one. Ooh, that felt like it took a long time. Only... Game one. But game two is on deck. Uh, 
All right. A lot of good stuff in this hand. And uh, we're going to be against some sort of aggressive red opener. I think that much is pretty apparent here. I have to decide, do I want to just cycle the effigy or play the maze? Let's go with the maze. We're going to take some damage as a result of that, but... Our hand isn't great at the moment. So trying to get this going so we can draw with that next turn and then maybe cycle here will help a lot. I mean, we see Journey, we see them burning red, they threw back Icker, right? They have Infuse. This is one of those moments where you just assume you're playing against aggro and you gotta plan accordingly. So that's a safe burn. Ice Spike here. It's actually pretty solid. I mean, we take more damage if we do that though could also just ice spike this I'm mostly concerned about like that that kills the maze right which I suppose isn't necessarily the end of the world but even just like waiting one turn means that we start getting value from that maze again So I think we're actually just going to spike this one. That might be a mistake. But it's what we're going to go with. Damage comes in. Not really a shocker. Burn the brainstorm and pop this down. Trades even, but it does also put the one damage on that. Which will make that easier to clean up with like a Zolia later. this Let's see gonna take what three but I think that's fine or we could put this here yeah I think I prefer that Because if our goal is to just play Magnus next turn anyway, we'd rather just prevent more damage. If at all possible. We're going to have to start considering uh, working Mend into our rotation here soon. Just so that we can keep our health afloat. But the Serpent Den should help out a fair amount. Trying to stall. Should help out a fair amount. We'll probably burn the Brainstorm again next turn because we're not really in a need for cards. It's that or the Ring right now. Bigger minions aren't as much of a concern. Oh, that's actually legit. That pushes a lot of damage for them. We're going to be down to eight here. Yeah. 
I think this just ends up being correct. Just means we're gonna get rushed on that side again as well, but not much we can really do about that at the moment. Once we get to the point where we can start playing stuff and mending every turn, I think we'll be fine. We're like on the cusp of stabilization, but there's still a very real risk that we just get blown out here, as that demonstrates. At this point, let's just let that go. do this so essentially uh, any any rusher is gonna be enough to take us out but we're gonna take the cycle I mean there's not much we could do They don't have a rusher, we have hope. Does not look like they have a rusher. Now they will be getting one not back right away. All right, we have we have some hope. Actually, Miso Libre is a fantastic top deck, as is this Wonder Drug. Wow! So we can get the Blight here. This can attack, this can attack. And we can burn, I guess, the Maze in this instance. So we get the gems. This, this uh, stunning here, plus the Wonder Drug, was insane! As far as top decks go. Four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, we actually threaten lethal next turn if the board if the board stays as is. Snake can destroy this, but it doesn't kill anything else. Zolia can give something else plus three plus zero. And then we swing with everything and then also the pox bringer, but okay. They they denied our efforts. This is a really bad time for me to blow this up just because of everything being fragile. We would very much like to sapo something, but I really feel like jamming satellite here might be our best case. Just prevents the health gain. We can do that. Cycle this here. I guess we'll drop another serpent down as well. Push the one damage and call that. This is a very close game. I think overall I like where we're at. This will die off next turn. Because of uh, the blight. We're never going to get her to brand status, but we don't really need to either, so...
turn around and uh, blight that. I take one, and everything takes one. But we could sacrifice this and then sapo, which would allow us to base. Yeah, that's actually that sets us up for the best shot at lethal. So we kind of nuke our own board. But we get a massive warded creature. They have no cards in hand. They're not going to get anything back from Journey here, which is the big important part. This will die off. But they'll have basically one card. And with us at nine health, all we need is for this to get home. And uh, with the two Poxbringers and the Cataclysm will likely ensure that. So they can drop that there. But now, now that we're up at a comfortable 9 health, we can do, like, something silly, and then, again, this nukes the board, but Sapo survives, not just because he's big, but because of the warded. And then he pushes it in, and that is a very close game. That... That turn where we top decked both Miso Libre and the Wonder Drug was incredibly clutch. But, uh, hey, look, I'm almost gold. We're getting there. We're catching up. We're almost gold. Uh, anyway, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Love you. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope to catch you in the next video.